Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm sitting down with you guys having the girl chat. And I was like, I thought I had just filmed a girl's chat video. It turns out it has been three months. How that time has gone by, I have no idea. But I asked you guys over on Instagram to send in whatever questions you have. And we're gonna go through them today. So grab yourselves tea, coffee, water, snacks, whatever you would like and let's go through the questions. So the first one is, do you find it hard not to compare yourself to others, especially being on social media? I think we all really struggle with that. You see people doing certain things or going on trips or their bodies look perfect and you're like, well, why don't I look like that? Or why am I not doing this? Or why am I not doing that? I think it's natural and I think we all do it. And I think social media has amplified that. What I try to do if I am comparing myself is to limit what I'm taking in on social media. So if I'm seeing something or someone and it's not bringing me any sense of like well-being or happiness and it's bringing me a negative comparison vibe, like that person is not for you to be following. That's kind of how I look at that as you never want to like set yourself up to do that or like doubt yourself and your abilities and your looks and all of these other things because you are enough, you are beautiful, we are all trying our best. And the last thing that we need is to do the comparison. And I am definitely guilty of it. And what I have done is like I said, I just kind of limit that and follow people and uh, basically follow the people that bring me positive vibes and positive energy and wellness uh, so that would be my tip with dealing with all of that because it is a very serious thing actually okay so i actually turned you guys because the lighting is just better over on this side it was getting dark anyways are you still pumping if so how often i'm actually no longer pumping so i finished pumping about a week ago my period did arrive and we'll get into that further in this q a or when the question pops up but I am not pumping. So I did gradually decrease. My supply was already diminishing rather quickly. And I think that was because the period was on its way. So with all of that coming, I think that was already affecting my supply and I knew that and I could tell. So I started supplementing and then the period did finally arrive. Um, and then, you know, I pretty much stopped pumping because there was nothing to pump. This is a funny question and one that's it's so relatable. Do you still find time to shave your legs as a mom? Sorry if that's too personal, LOL. Definitely not too personal. And if I'm being 100% honest, nope. I do not really have the time. I'll tell you guys honestly, the only time that I do shave my legs is when they're like severely out of control or if I'm wearing shorts or like I am planning on, on a trip like going to Universal and I'm like, right, I need to shave my legs. Or if I forget and I wear something that's cropped and there's a little bit of leg, I'm not kidding, I did this last week. I only shaved what was visible with a dry razor, which is never the best plan. It was very itchy and I had to use lotion. So, but it was a very fast in the moment situation. So that is where I'm at with that, with shaving. That's just the honest truth of it, guys. I just, I don't, I don't have the time. I don't think about it. It's, I do have the time. It's just, I don't do it, I guess. I need, I need to get better at that. Do you feel fully healed from giving birth? I do. I would definitely say it took, when I'm thinking back, it took longer than I thought it would. I think after the three month postpartum mark, you're feeling pretty good, um, physically, I would say. Maybe a little less than that, but I did underestimate the pain down there and the time of healing it would take, but it does get better and it does heal. And now being nine months postpartum, I do feel completely back to myself. Do you ever struggle with knowing who you are? Sometimes I do. This was a huge thing for me. I know when I was in my earlier 20s, like that 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, kind of like area, there were times where I literally said out loud, like, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I want. And I'm a lost soul. Like, I don't know what is going on in my life. I have 100% been there. And that's usually when my life kind of seemed out of control or I didn't know where I wanted to be and where I wanted to go. And again, this is another thing that I think all of us go through and all of us struggle with. And when you're having thoughts like that, it can be really, really overwhelming because I've been there. 
And what I would recommend is maybe writing down like where you would like to see yourself. Sit down and be like, write. What do I really like? What do I like to do? What hobbies do I have? You know, what things bring me happiness? What do I want to do with my life? And that can be a very big question. Like, what do I want to see myself doing for the next 20, 25 years? You know what I mean? Like, those are big questions, but I think sitting down and writing those things down and spending time alone, spending time with yourself can really help you close in on who you are and what you like because when we start to also overthink all of that and you get in your head about not knowing what you want not knowing who you are it can be a very overwhelming thought but write things down and as time goes on and as you get older i don't how old, how old you are but for me personally like as i've gotten older i've learned who I am, I'm still learning. There's things that I'm that are gonna change for me 100%, but as you get older, you just kind of learn more things about yourself and things kind of settle down. Has your period cycle started yet? And if so, how did it go? All right, so let's talk about this. So I have had period cramps on and off for months. I was certain my period was coming months and months and months ago, but it never did. So it finally arrived a week ago. What was the period date? I'll give you guys the date. What was the date? All right, so May 24th, that is when it arrived. It actually arrived the 23rd in the evening, but it was very light and just kind of spotty, but then fully the next day. So I did contact my IVF clinic. That's a whole process that I'll get into a little bit later and in a separate video, um, but I did go and get blood work done for that. But again, it's gonna be a process that we'll discuss. Um, but anyways, so the period, yes, nine months and like two or three weeks postpartum that did arrive. And the week before I thought I was, just, you know, like I was literally binge eating. I felt like I was like, what is going on? I was eating ramen noodles almost every day and I could eat ramen noodles for breakfast. Like actually I was eating them for breakfast sometimes. And then we kept going to Dairy Queen and I was getting cookie dough blizzards and like, I'm all about balance. I'm all about treating yourself, but that's all I wanted was ramen noodles salty pickles, potato chips, and ice cream. And it was a lot of it. It was heavy, it was nonstop. I was eating everything in sight. And then I started getting the period cramps and all the things started happening. And I'm like, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. And then I checked and there she was. And it was, and this might be TMI, but in case you haven't had your first postpartum period, and again, everybody's body is different. So always bear that in mind. It was very heavy, which I know, TMI. It was very heavy and, a cr and crampy, but not terrible. It was not what I was expecting. I heard, and I'm sure some, some women, like I was told you're like in bed rolling around in severe pain. And I've had previous periods that I have been in bed rolling around in severe pain where I literally black out, my ears ring. It's a whole thing. Sometimes I get those terrible periods, so I understand. But mine, honestly, my first postpartum period wasn't bad and it has already ended. It lasted the normal time frame of like five days for me. And I'm feeling good. I'm feeling back to normal. But that first day I did feel really tired and just not wonderful. But it arrived and I felt two different ways about when it did arrive. So number one, I was excited because I felt like I had my body back or my body was coming back to its normal state. And then the other part of me was kind of sad because it's like my body is moving forward. Like I'm not, I don't need to carry my baby, which obviously, cause I gave birth nine months ago, but, and then Liam like doesn't need me in that way where I'm breastfeeding cause my supply kind of drained out. And I was like, this is just a wild feeling. Like my body is reverting back to how it was. And my body knows that Liam is now okay. And like, it, if that makes sense, like obviously he needs me as his mother in other areas and aspects of life, but in the way of carrying him and breastfeeding him or pumping, exclusively pumping him, like that phase is over. So I was kind of sad about that. So that's how I feel about the whole postpartum. Let me know if you had those feelings, if you feel the same way. It's a very interesting process. I'm super nervous to get a pap smear for the first time. Do you have any advice? My advice is do it for sure because the screening is very important. You wanna get things detected before it's too late and before something bad could pop up in a pap smear, such as you know pre-cancer or cancerous cells. So you always wanna get them done. However, I do completely understand 
the nervousness of going and getting it done. I don't think anybody loves going in to get a pap smear, but just know it's very quick. Mine have always been very fast, very quick. And it's like, oh, once it's over, you're like, that, whew, you know, it's over and you are all clear until you get your results. And hopefully those are also all clear and you can move forward. But just know that you have the right to ask any questions that you may, if you're nervous, let them know like, hey, I'm really nervous about this and they'll talk to you. And hopefully they're very kind and very sweet. I've always had a great experience with mine. So just know that it'll be done and over with before you know it. And it's for a great reason that we get them done, just to make sure that we're all clear of anything bad. So when's the next bestie meetup with the babies? So that we actually, I was just FaceTiming my best friend, Angela. We talk once a week on FaceTime for hours and it, we look forward to it. It's just the best thing ever since you guys do know that. Well, I don't know. If you don't know, if you're new, my best friend lives several hours away. So we don't get to see each other as often as we would like. And we both had babies at the same time. So now it's even more difficult to make the drive and see each other. So we try to make a trip once a year to see each other, whether we go up there or they come down here. Um, but we always make a point to FaceTime each other and talk for hours as much as we can. So I highly recommend that if you have a great friend and just life is so busy and chaotic, try to make that time to FaceTime your friends because it's so important. Um, but anyways, we're really excited because they are talking about coming soon in a couple of months. So we're trying to plan that trip and see how it will all work out. And we're so looking forward to it. And the boys will be old enough to go swimming in the pool, which is going to be lots of fun. And... Oh, it, I'm, we're just so looking forward to it. So, and I'm excited to see them interact with each other because the last time they saw each other, they were four months old. And this time they'll be, by the time they come over a year old. So that is really cute. I'm excited to see them interact with each other. All right, guys. So that is all of the questions. If you have any questions that I did not answer and you would like me to answer them in an upcoming video, leave them down below for me and I will answer them in the next girls chat video. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye.